Okay guys, this is one part of this video I was really looking forward to showing you and I think you're gonna love this. And it's actually specking out, building up your heroes how you see fit. The combinations are just unlimited. You could ask our good friend Paul, who probably knows the game better than me or anyone. You can build any type of hero. So out of the, all the different combinations, this is what I did. So we're just gonna say we've been playing a few turns and Mahaliak came into some gold. He actually landed on one of the treasure chest spaces. He drew a treasure chest card and he found 1500 gold. Raising the lid of the ancient chest, you find 1500 gold. So Mahalia came into some gold and he went, he sent Albus to the village to retrieve some gear. And we're lucky that he did not hit one of the many traps in the treasure chest deck, like the Wall of Arrows trap. Remember, when I designed this, it is the ultimate in risk and reward. You can find good stuff or really bad stuff. Okay, so. Albus went back to the village. He gave the gold to Albus. Albus brought this back. So let's see what Mahaliak purchased. Of course, picture this as their hands, okay? And yes, a bow takes two, but for gameplay's sake, this is how it is. So that's his left and right hand. So of course he has his primordial axe still. That's one damage. But in the blacksmith shop in the village, this happened to be available. This is a piece of fabled gear. And like we discussed before, there's 10 pieces of unique fabled gear in the game and in the story I wrote for Dungeon Crusade um, this was gear that belonged to the many characters so here is Mallory's golden bow fabled gear now it's a um, common piece of gear and fabled gear usually has a high gold cost oh and before I forget we're going to have a video dedicated to the 193 pieces of loot in the game so that will be on its way for you guys but let's take a look at here this does two damage also Mahaliak wanted to boost up some of those warfare values on his card. You know, he wants to be more proficient. So with Mallory's Golden Bow, look at that. That's a plus three to the blue warfare dice, or ranged warfare. And that's going to give him a bonus to his spiritual warfare dice. Remember, those are the orange. So already, at least the way that I'm specking out my hero, I want Mahaliak to be... I'm going to try to make him proficient everything. And as a big pro crusader tip, all you people that want to play the solo crusader mode, you might want to listen to this. One of the key things to do for victory in, in the solo crusader mode is you want to make your solo hero very proficient in the six different warfare types. Of course, there's a mercenary camp, the new mercenary camp in the village where you can hire up to two mercenary. But if you're really going lone wolf with just your hero and your fetch hound, this is something you definitely want to do. So for this game, I'm not going to make, you know, make him a powerhouse and, you know, straight chaos and straight physical. I want to spread it around so he can handle anything that comes at him. So he's equipped Mallory's golden bow. And again, and it will buff those warfare values. Moving along, as you know, we have the troll's tooth. That'll give a bonus to the physical warfare and chaos warfare. And hopefully this is all gelling now and you're getting all this. But remember, he is not good in arcane warfare. So he decided to pick up this heavy cloak here. And that will give him a plus two to arcane warfare. So remember, on his card it said negative three. So we're, he's coming out of that now. He's becoming more proficient in arcane warfare. So he could add a plus two now to the arcane warfare dice, the green dice. And finally, he wants to be even better at arcane since he was not proficient at all. That's a plus two. So already he's getting out of the, you know, the negative um, with equipping this jade ring. So just consider that with all the different pieces of loot, and I assure you there is everything, you know, in that loot deck. And I don't want to give you too many spoilers because I want you to discover this. This is the way I, specked out my hero but we're going to go a little bit deeper let's take a look at power gems and weapons that have sockets okay guys we're going to wrap this up and then move on to our next demo but again i hope you're enjoying this um i really wanted to talk about this especially so i hope you're seeing 
just how much you can do with your heroes and specking them out, but it's gonna get even better. So we're gonna say it's a few more churns, and as you know, there's mining and crafting in Dungeon Crusade. So Mahaliak did some mining and he found some precious stones and minerals. And yes, we will have a video over mining and crafting. It's a really super fun part of the game. So with his gold and these minerals and precious stones, he gave them to Albus. Well, Albus went back to the village and retrieved him the Forester Axe. So let's take a look at this here. It still does one damage, but also it's going to make him even more proficient in Chaos Warfare with that plus one. And just as you can see, you can equip any weapon you want, guys, on your heroes. You can even put a staff, whatever you want to do. You have all that control of with your heroes. So he's kind of upgraded his starting weapons. We're going to get rid of the Primordial Axe, and he is going to equip the Forester Axe. Now notice right here, there's two kinds of sockets in the game. There's round ones and square ones. We're just going to talk about the round ones now. And what these do is buff up your hero's warfare values, but for, for any type. So let me put this here and equip him with that. So already he's even more better, he's more proficient. But he crafted, um, when he was mining, he happened to find, that's moonstone right there. He found two pieces of moonstone. And here is Zoltanite, two pieces of Zoltanite. And the way that I created all this, think of Moonstone as a hardening agent. So when the blacksmith melts this down, it's like a coating, really, really tough. Zoltanite doesn't really have anything. It's a real fragile crystal-like material, but it amplifies the effects of the precious stones, which follow the warfare types. Again, we're gonna get into all this. So he found two pieces of Moonstone, two pieces of Zoltanite, and this is Jade. Think Arcane Warfare, Jade. Um, like Ruby Stone is red, Physical Warfare, so on and so forth. So what happens is the blacksmith crafted this for him and churned it into a power gem. And basically you just use whatever side. So in this case, it's equipped in this hand, so you slide it under there. Look, but let's take a look at this. This is a Greater Jade Prowess Gem. That's going to give him plus four to Arcane Warfare. But say that there's also Obsidian, think Chaos Warfare. If that was two pieces of Obsidian, it would be a Greater um, Obsidian Prowess Gem. That would be plus four to Chaos Warfare, so on and so forth for all the other ones. So as you can see, Mahaliak wants to be very proficient in arcane warfare and all we're going to do is you take your card with the socket and think it like plugs into there and so it's that or you could just do this if you want if you really want to be thematic and put the gem over there so kind of picture that like like zoomed in like that gem is plugged into that socket so now we have our forester axe plus one damage plus one the chaos warfare but in addition you can get a plus four to arcane warfare. And there you go, and think about it. You can maybe find another weapon here. I wouldn't get rid of a piece of Havel gear though, because that's very good, that has another socket and customize it even more. So my friends, there you go. This is what I've been really wanting to show you. Just one of the many ways you can customize all your heroes like this. And I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, let's move on to our next topic and discuss that. Okay guys, this part right here is what I was looking forward to. There's a lot of things I was looking forward to in this video, but this right here is what um, was paramount to me. There was a lot of things that were, but this in particular, true party building. And I know Paul, our good friend Paul, this is his favorite combo right here. So let's start with this. Since we know about the six warfare types, and you know, like going back to Mahaliak, um, just to refresh your memory, you know, he's very proficient in chaos warfare and physical warfare, you know, at level one. And not too good with spiritual warfare and arcane warfare, and just middle of the road with ranged warfare and mythical warfare, okay? So here's where the true party building comes in and where it's going to lead us into some of our final demos. Again, we're not going to do the whole combat roles because we're going to be going in depth with that in the following video. So really this is the next video with combat and this goes along 
with each other. Now, take a look at um, Zeke here, our wizard, and you're going to find almost the exact opposite. Meaning, take a look at chaos warfare and physical warfare. He's a wizard. He's not very good with chaos. He has to minus two from all chaos warfare rolls. Over here with physical warfare, he's going to have to deduct three. But take a look at his arcane warfare and spiritual. He's very good, very proficient with arcane warfare. Pretty good with spiritual warfare and pretty good with mythical. So it's almost like the opposite with Mahaliak. My point is, these two right here make a great team. True party building. And as coming back to Paul, this is his favorite team to put together. But you're going to find through playing, and you know I want you guys to find this stuff out, and I don't want to tell you everything. You're going to find some of your favorite heroes are great together. And like this is just a powerhouse. Meaning that if... They come across any kind of magic users or warlocks or wizards or you know orcs or anything like that these two really benefit being together and that leads us into remember the initiative tokens with rally you rally heroes together true party building remember we touched on that and i said we're going to come back so that's what we're going to discuss as we go into the dungeon and i show you a few things with um heroes special abilities so i hope all of this is coming together to you and you can see what Dungeon Crusade has to offer and why it's almost like a thinking man's dungeon crawl game. And like I said, there's so many different ways to spec out your heroes and build your heroes. You know, everyone is going to have a different way they want to play and that's what's awesome about it. So that's what I wanted to point out. So hopefully you can see for these two heroes, this is a great team and you can rally up to three heroes together, meaning Say if Mahaliak, he could rally Zeke and one more hero for a total of three heroes. And you would want that to be like your guardian hunting party or going into a high level chamber, okay? So let's take a look at the rally side um, of the initiative tokens and we'll just do a little demo right here. And we're gonna incorporate some of those special abilities so you can see how you can mitigate dice rolls and just a bunch of other things. But remember, there's tons and tons of different special abilities. So we're just going to look at a few of them. And in a way, I'm like that because it's not going to give you a spoiler about, you know, everything else. That, so you could discover it, okay? So let's take a look at these heroes. And we're going to pull one more hero out um, for this demo. Okay, and before we get into our little demo here, I have a little surprise for you. We're going to bring out... A very awesome hero is one of the expansion heroes and this is Matari and this is our bard hero and we're gonna be looking at her um, one of her three special abilities enchanting him and so let's go over her hero card level one of course and she is equipped starting weapon is the bandit blade so let's take a look at these warfare types um, and values so right here, Chaos Warfare, she's not very proficient. That's a negative two. Arcane, zero. Spiritual Warfare, a little good with that, plus one. Ranged Warfare, pretty good with a plus one. Mythical Warfare, she is great with a plus three, but not too hot with Physical Warfare, minus three. So I thought you would like to take a look at this. And um, again, this is going to be part of our demo. And this is she is really going to hit it home with... Um, her one special ability that I think you're gonna love seeing. Okay, so we'll put her up here and we're gonna start our demo here. Okay guys, this is kind of like our grand finale and I've been looking forward to the end of this. You're going to get a lot out of this little demo, but we're gonna run a few different ways here so you can see you're gonna see some reckless gameplay that I wouldn't recommend and why you just can't run a hero into a chamber thinking you're going to win. That's just, again, thinking man's dungeon crawl game. But then we're going to use some really good tactics and employ some special abilities. So you are going to get a lot out of this video. And again, I think it's going to build your excitement for the game. Okay, so our first scenario here, I tried to get all this in. So we can see, again, you do this in the upkeep phase. We've laid these initiative tokens. We have Mahaliak, our Barbarian activating first, followed by Zeke, our Wizard, activating second, and then finally Matari third. 
So for our first thing here is let me set this up. We're over here in the tomb of St. Viticus South. Now the heroes are on a quest and there's a quest item in both of these chambers right here that they have to find. Um, when we set this quest up, there's a good chance of level one monsters showing up, but there's also a slight chance of a level two showing up. So for our first scenario, it's gonna be reckless gameplay. We're gonna take Mahaliak and he is just going to storm into this chamber and he's just ready to go. And maybe you have those kind of players that think they're just, you know, like lone wolf and they're just gonna go in there and take care of everything and kill the monster and get the quest item. All right, so remember, we're not gonna be doing combat here. That's gonna be in the following video. So we're just gonna focus on true party building and some special abilities. So Mahaliak is up first with initiative token one. Remember, he has a base movement of two plus the roll of a d6. And so that is three plus two is five. So it's one, it's never an action to slide open a door. And two, he's in the chamber. And remember something, if you were gonna rally a hero, you must do that first before that, mo that champion monster token is revealed, okay? But for our reckless, um, scenario here. He's not going to, he's not going to rally a hero. He's not going to do anything. He's going to try to take on that monster on his own. Let's incorporate this special ability here. This is just one of three unique ones. And remember all special abilities can be leveled up to level three. So here is intimidating shout. We can see that it cost him two life force to acquire this. It cost one essence to spend and this can be used in a chamber, notice the door, and the hallway. The green arrow means this the, never has to be channeled. If it was a red arrow, that means it has to be channeled. Green means you can continuously use this. So let's look at this real quick. Intimidating Shout may be activated before making a warfare roll. Once activated, select one of the monster's warfare values and lower it by two for this round of combat. So it's a pretty good one. Um, you know, we can debuff um, one of the monsters um, warfare values as we looked at before but we'll go over that again so he's gonna go in here and he's like I'm not gonna rally anyone I'm gonna take this monster on so you declare that then you flip over the champion monster token and what's in there it's a level 2 champion monster that's not good And remember you never reveal the quest token until that monster is defeated so what we're gonna do is I happen to have the level two champion monster deck and yes i loaded this up to show you some things we're going to draw the top card and it is a keeper of the faith and remember silver star is normal version this has origin stories gold stars are elites and they have special abilities so let's take a look at these warfare types arcane warfare spiritual warfare and chaos well He's gonna do good in this phase, because remember, champion monsters and guardians use all three of the warfare. Um, they're versed in, they're proficient in using all three. He'll probably do pretty good with chaos, but remember on his, on his hero card, he is not very proficient with arcane and spiritual. And this is a level two champion monster, plus it has a special ability. These always activate first. And this is Book of Tormented Souls before each round of combat. Before each round of combat. Each hero must test strength 10 and attempt to bash the ghostly skulls. Notice the skulls coming out of the book there. On a fail, that hero loses one health and one essence. So guys, just even with his intimidating shouts, you know, he could activate that and he would probably try to lower that arcane warfare down by two. So that would only be a 13. But remember, he still has to deduct three um, off of that. So this is an example of really reckless gameplay. That would not be good to do. And, and remember, in each of those champion monster decks, he could have ran into something like this, dual monster chamber. And that's when two champion monsters reside within the chamber. And of course, you would have to pick another champion monster card. So. But as it is with this, you can see this is not going to go good for Mahaliak. And in our combat video, I think we're going to demonstrate this, okay? So let's rewind everything. But I just wanted to show you what happens if you try to just go in there and kill stuff. The six warfare types. 
Just consider that with being proficient, middle of the road and not proficient, okay? So let's rewind everything, but let's bring Zeke in this time. Okay, so we're back at the start again. So let's use a little better strategy this time. So Mahaliak has, of course, initiative token one, and Zeke has initiative token two. This time Mahaliak's like, okay, I'm gonna rally Zeke in there to help me out. Again, we wouldn't know what's in there. So we're gonna generate some movement. I'm going just pretty quick with this, so hopefully you're following along with this. Mahaliak would roll for movement, and again, it's a three. So one, remember it's never an action to open a door, okay? But this time he says, I'm going to rally, flip over your token, a fellow hero in to help me here. True party building. How much does essence, does it cost to rally a hero? One essence. So remember you can rally up to two heroes for the cost of one essence. So this time he's calling out to his comrade to come in there and help out. Remember, you do not reveal that until you're done rallying heroes or you declare you're gonna combat the champion monster. Zeke has initiative token two. He rolls. Five, plenty of movement. One, two, three, and then he enters with four. Now the battle will commence. Now you can reveal this, and again, it's a level two champion monster. We're gonna pick that card again, but this time, Consider Zeke is in there. He's going to attack. Um, there's usually there's three phases when you combat. And again, we'll see that in the next video. So for phase, for two of the phases, Zeke is going to attack in spiritual warfare and arcane warfare because remember, he's proficient in those two. And then finally, Mahaliak is going to attack in the final phase with chaos. Right there you can see true party building and why those two are great as a team. But also consider this. We had Intimidating Shout. So Mahaliak could use this. In addition, here is one of three of Zeke's special ability, Flaming Orb. Notice the red X here. That's the dungeon corridor. You cannot use that in a dungeon corridor. If you ever see an X, you can't use that. It can be used in a chamber represented, represented by the chamber door. This costs three life force XP to acquire it. And notice here on this one where it says um, three and two. So once we read this, this will make sense. This is a great special ability, a real powerful one. Flaming ore may be activated at the start of a combat round for the cost of three essence. At the end of a combat round, Roll 1d6 and consult the chart below. So these are some very fun abilities that you're going to see, or this system right here, we're going to roll and see the outcome. So just from this, Zeke, besides doing, you know, hopefully damage with the warfare roll, with this special ability, he has a chance to do extra damage. And then the final words here for to keep Flaming Orb active, um, for Flaming Orb to remain active, the wizard must exhaust two essence at the end of every combat round. And again, this is really my MMORPG, you know, influence and what I love about MMORPGs kicking in here. So you can see by just rallying Zeke, the right hero in, they are probably gonna womp on this Keeper of the Faith. So that was actually a very good strategy and tactics to use. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this is settling in with you on really how much this game has to offer our final one it's going to get even better let's rewind it and run our final scenario okay guys our final scenario here and you're going to love this one now this right here is a great use of strategy and tactics um and this is really going to hit it home on how much you can do with this game and remember consider there's all these different kind of special abilities so this is just um, it's kind of a spoiler because Matari is a great hero. First of all, notice that we changed the warfare or the initiative tokens. Matari has initiative token one, Mahaliak has initiative token two, and Zeke has initiative token three. And I'll show you why I did this. And again, she, the Matari is a great like support hero. We're going to start off with Matari here. Now, 
She has a little more movement, if you notice on her movement, that's a D6 plus the uh, roll of D6, but she has a base movement of three. And what I'm gonna do is bring her down, and this really is very MMORPG-ish right here. I'm gonna bring her down to this chamber, because remember, they're still looking for this quest item, okay? So we're gonna roll. Okay, two and three, that's five. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna stop her right there. Let me show you this. This is her special ability, Enchanting Him. I'm actually giving you guys a big spoiler. So let's take a look at the card up there with the green life force. It costs three um, life force to acquire this. It costs three essence to use. Um, red arrow, remember, after we use this, it has to be channeled. And you can use this openly in a dungeon or a chamber. You guys are gonna love this special ability right here. Enchanting Him may be activated any time during the hero phase, remember that. When activated, all warfare rolls the heroes make during the hero phase gain plus two. Enchanting him has a radius of four squares around the bard when activated. Important here, light of line of sight is not needed to gain the benefit of this effect. And I wanna tell you a quick rule right now. The chambers, although it looks like two spaces, you always count those as one. And remember, line of sight is not needed. So picture there's this four space like aura around her. What we're gonna do is we're gonna activate this right now. So we're gonna come over to her hero card. When she ends her turn, we're gonna spend the three essence. Enchanting him now is active. So remember, this is going to give any heroes within this radius a plus two to um, their warfare rolls. I think you see where this is going, right? Now, Zeke is up with two, right? In initiative token two. He's gonna move into that chamber. Six, plenty of movement. One, two, we'll say it again. Remember, doors do not cost anything. So he's in there. He is going to rally Zeke into that chamber. Pay the one essence. Okay, Zeke answers the rally call. So he's being rallied, roll for movement, one. I'm glad actually a one came up. So one, two. Now notice that he is shy of one, two movement to get in. Heroes in Dungeon Crusade can spend essence to gain one movement. You can do it as much as you like, except if you're on zero essence, you can't do that. So he needs two movement. So we're gonna move this down, one, two. We spent two essence, we gained two movement. So I'm actually glad that came up because I was going to bring it up anyway. So one, two, that puts them inside of the chamber. So we're not going to go over those special abilities like they have, but consider something. For those warfare rolls, we're going to bring our friendly Keeper of the Faith. So consider that, you know, Mahaliak has Intimidating Shout. He can lower one of those. Zeke has Flaming Orb where he could activate that to put some hurt on that monster. Finally, Matari's out there and she activated Enchanting Him and that gives the heroes a plus two to all warfare rolls during the hero phase. My friends, I really love doing this demo for you. I hope that this just shows, this is just literally a drop of water in a bucket of everything you can do, the different strategy, the different tactics that you can use in Dungeon Crusade. But this right here, I, I'm gonna probably point a lot of people just to this part right here. To me, this is what sets Dungeon Crusade apart from a lot of other dungeon crawlers. What I showed, what, I, what we you know talked about right here and discussed and did those demos and very MMORPG-ish. So very happy we did this. I hope you enjoyed this little demo and I'll leave everything else um, for a surprise for you. Okay, let's pull the camera back and let's wrap this up. Okay, all, and here we are at the end of another showcase video and from the heart, I love doing this one. This is something I have always wanted to show people, like really get down to the nitty gritty and you know, what we discussed with, you know, showing that um, kind of supportive special ability with Matari and Flaming Orb. So you can see the difference from just reckless gameplay with, with 
you know, Mahaliak running into that chamber and encountering a level two elite champion monster, and then using some good planning and strategy and how you can really turn the tides of battle. So again, that was a drop in the bucket of what this game has to offer. And I hope you enjoyed it. I am super happy with this and I will definitely be pointing people um, to this video just to show them what the game has to offer. Okay, I'll, now I'm hoping I can squeeze this all into just one big video for you. I don't really want to split this one, um, but we'll see how it goes. And the next, the following video, of course, will be um, the combat. We're going to go over the classic combat system, revised. Uh, you already learned how to combat um, minions, but we'll go over that fully. And it'll just be a nice, you know, counterpart to this video. All right, all, as we go over here leave you with that i'm very happy that we took the time we went over the six different warfare types and i hope you can see now true party building and what i was out to do with giving these heroes and monsters all these different warfare types okay guys i hope you have a great day love you guys thank you so much for your time and interest i am sincerely grateful to you i love making these videos and hanging out with you i will probably have the next video out over the weekend so you can look forward to that um and then we'll discuss maybe loot after that one i'd like to go over the 193 pieces of loot the rarities so maybe we'll shoot for that after that one after the combat video all right everyone have a great day stay safe and happy gaming and again thank you for your time i will be talking to you very soon bye bye